and welcome to the Sharp 600, brought to you by Covers.com. I'm your host, Jason Logan, and a fitting theme song here as we kick off the Tuesday pod, Mo Money, Mo Problems. We had a lot more problems than money in week six, an ice-cold weekend for myself, as well as the pod picks. Uh, after a few fantastic weeks of action, though, but uh, as I said last week, gambler giveth and gambler taketh away, and uh, these ups and downs are just part of the sports betting uh you know, dog and pony show, but, uh, we're back on the horse in week seven, which gets started with kind of a weird one between the saints and the Cardinals on Thursday. We're going to get into that game in a bit. I do want to say what's up and congratulations to my man, Dell, uh, whose Eagles beat my Cowboys on Sunday night. Dell, good on you. Congrats. Yeah, it was kind of bittersweet. Our pick lost, but my Eagles shit on your Cowboys. So I always, I always like to see that. Yeah. All right. Well, we still got another game. Dak's coming back. I'm holding on to hope here. So uh, before we get started, though, a reminder, please rate and review the Sharp 600. If you've been listening this football season, if you like the new format, you like what we're doing, let us know. Uh, much appreciated. It helps us grow. It helps us reach sports bettors like yourself. And with that said, now on to the 600 seconds. Oh, no, let's go. Let's go crazy. Let's get nuts. Love some prints on a Tuesday afternoon. A wild weekend in wager. We had plenty of outright upsets from underdogs, but dogs overall go seven and seven ATS in week six. They now sit 38, 52 and three ATS overall. That's 58% winners blind for teams getting the points and notable line movement for the dog for Thursday night football. We're going to run down some of the notable line moves here in the first two ways of days of action for week seven. So Arizona opened as big as minus two and a half. And despite all the injuries stacking up for the saints right now, this one has ticked down to Cardinals minus one, the fire cliff Kingsbury train. It's in full speed right now. He was plus plus one fifty. And the fave to be the next coach fired after Carolina can Matt rule. He's now minus 110 after that ugly loss on Sunday. Uh, we have the Washington Commanders. They opened plus five versus Green Bay. People expected Carson Wentz to miss time, and he will with that fractured finger. Tyler Hineke is now under center, and many books have actually ticked this up to plus five and a half. However, more respected online shops kind of keeping it glow, playing it cool. We're seeing Washington plus five, Washington plus four and a half out there. Wentz was just so bad. Uh, any line difference between he and, and Taylor Haneke right now is, is kind of minimal. And really, do you want to be betting on Washington? I think that's the ultimate, ultimate question we need to ask ourselves. We have a couple moves around the key numbers as well, too. We saw the Jaguars go from minus two and a half up to minus three, hosting the Giants at five and one, but a team that no one trusts or believes in. They just keep on winning. And then the Ravens jump from minus six to as high as minus seven. We're going to touch on this game in a little bit. And then the Chiefs quickly went from minus two and a half to minus three visiting San Francisco. And we have the Dolphins jump from minus six to minus seven with two expected back in week seven. Now, there are a couple bets that I already got down on Sunday night. I did take Ravens minus six on the Sunday night. Baltimore back home and able to ground and pound what is one of the worst defenses out there. More specifically, one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. The Browns enter week seven ranked out 31st in EPA allowed per play while sitting dead last in EPA allowed per handoff. And the Ravens run game right now, number two in the offensive flip of that advanced metric, 44% success rate per handoff. Uh, still some Baltimore minus six lines out there. Most six and a half, seven, uh, if they are available in your market. The other one I bet was over 45 points in Steelers Dolphins. This one has come down a tick to 44 and a half at some places. I think it has to do with Kenny Pickett's status, the rookie uh, quarterback for the Steelers in concussion protocol. Honestly, I don't think there's that much of a difference or a line value between he and Trubisky here at this point. Um, the Finns trying to pick up where they left off, however, before to his injury. This was the number one offense, number one in EPA per play uh, in the land in those three weeks. And then the Steelers defense was supposed to be the shit this year, but definitely not living up to those standards. 23rd in EPA allowed per play in week six. They had a 20 to 16 win over Tampa Bay, but it kind of perpetuates the myth that this is a good Steelers defense. Tampa Bay just went one for four inside the red zone, left a lot of points on the table. Could have been a lot worse. And Miami's defense Pretty much just as bad. The Finns have been gashed for 27, 40, 24 points the past three games. Sit 23rd in EPA allowed in that three-game span while also allowing 75% success rate in the red zone to opponents. You got a lot of players missing on both defenses, primarily in the secondary. So I like the over 45 or over 44 and a half, whatever the best number you can get. On to our weekly look at spot bets, a.k.a. the situational handicaps. 
uh, which is a great way to find subtle edges that the analytics may pass over when you look at the schedule and how it could impact the outcome. And the letdown spot for week seven has the Atlanta Falcons bringing their perfect 6-0 and ATS mark to Cincinnati. Atlanta runs the risk of a letdown after that big home upset over San Francisco. And the market's definitely showing Atlanta some respect here, too. The spread currently under a touchdown. It's dropped from plus 6.5 to plus 6 at some shops. Uh, but they're taking on a Bengals team that's building momentum. They have three wins in their last four games, and they've also gone a perfect 4-0 against the spread in that span as well, too. Atlanta has injuries to its top two corners in the secondary, and that is a unit that has been the backbone of this defense. Very much a bend but don't break defense for Atlanta. Uh, right now, the Bengals minus six looks pretty good at home. The week seven look ahead spot has the Tampa Bay Buccaneers laying minus 10 and a half on the road at Carolina and the Panthers are a damn mess. Coaching situation is a mess. The QB situation is even worse. You have skilled players up in the air. You got McCaffrey being shopped around. Allegedly Robbie Anderson, you know, threw a fit. He got tossed. He's traded. So you can see why this spread is this high, but are the Bucs deserving of this right now? You know, Tom Brady's frustration boiled over. He looked like me trying to put my kids to bed at night there yelling at his offensive line. But that kind of personifies how betters feel right now with the Bucks. This team has failed to cover in four straight outings. They're just one in three straight up in that span. And despite that downward spiral, bookies are still backing up a dump truck full of points for this game. But it is a short week coming for Tampa Bay in week eight. And that's where this look ahead spot comes into play. They take on Baltimore on Thursday night football. And this Brady led team has been banged up since the summer, just dealing with injuries constantly. And should Tampa Bay get up big on Carolina and start pulling out guys and start resting guys, that's a pretty big wide gap for a backdoor cover from the Panthers to come in and play spoiler for anyone that did lay the lumber with the Bucks. And we've seen Tampa Bay get a bad backdoor cover against the Falcons there a couple weeks ago. And finally, the schedule spot sees the red hot New York Jets playing their second straight road game in third and four weeks in Denver, which is where you also have to deal with the thin air and that energy sapping altitude. The Jets went to mile high last year in week three. They got shut out 26 nothing. Now, I like the energy. I like the swagger coming from this Jets team. Um, but. Uh, you know, they already spit in the face of our letdown spot last week. We thought they were going to go to Green Bay and lay an egg. No, they didn't. They upset Aaron Rodgers. Come out of that, it kind of layers in another letdown spot into a kind of what is a situational sandwich right now in an already tough schedule spot. Now, the Jets did open plus three, but there's a lot of reports out there right now saying Russell Wilson uh, having an MRI on a hamstring injury that could be significant on top of the shoulder injury. Uh, he's kind of falling apart right now. And that line, uh, where it is available, not a lot of books have this open right now, but uh, Broncos down to minus one right now with books uh, that are hanging that number. So we've been very football focused on the Sharp 600, but today the NBA season gets underway and I am a big basketball fan. Um, and a big NBA fan. However, I don't really get involved until like Christmas Day because, you know, it's like an NBA game. The guys really don't start playing until the second half. And, you know, maybe some injuries and stuff and things to watch in that first, you know, October, November schedule. But I really don't get involved until December. But that's not to say I don't have any opinions here. And I do have a couple quick futures bets uh, that I think have value here. MVP, Joel Embiid for the 76ers. And the Sixers are a mess when he's not on the floor. And so his value in terms of most valuable is just it's it's not disputed. Embiid is a force on both ends of the floor, and he's got his the best team around him that he's ever had in Philly, I believe. The thing I like about Embiid here is that he welcomes the challenge. He goes up against the NBA's best. He always ups his game when he takes on the Bucks and the Celtics and the Nets. When those guys show up in the schedule, he's just got to stay healthy enough to hoist that MVP trophy. And you can get him a plus 700. I also like the 76ers to win the Atlantic division. You know, the Celtics are kind of shaky after that offseason coaching drama. The Nets are one bad a game away from imploding, as always. And that leaves the 76ers as a live bet to win the Atlantic. And the Sixers, they hung on to a very deep and talented group of players. And then they also added some personnel in the right places. They got tough and added some shooters, added some defense. It's not all on Embiid either. You got James Harden. He committed to winning in Philly. I believe in the beard. I believe in the 76ers. Plus 300 to win the Atlantic division. And two-minute drill time. Uh, Thursday Night Football has a pretty low bar for betters in Week 7. 
after the past two Thursday games produced just 40 total points. And this one, a bit of a mess. You get multiple skilled players injured or out for the Saints and DeAndre Hopkins coming back for the Cardinals, just as Hollywood Brown goes down for them. Uh, the one bet that I do have for Thursday night football is Arizona tight end Zach Ertz to go over 47 and a half yards receiving. Now, Brown was drawing a ton of targets from Murray this season and even more over the past three weeks. However, uh, he's gone in here and with Hopkins usage kind of up in the air. They don't know if he's going to be a snap count. I don't expect him to come in and just fully take over Brown's touches. And that means more receptions or more targets for Rondale Moore and Zach Ertz, who continues to be a very popular option for Kyler Murray. Ertz drawing targets of 22.5% on pass attempts the last three weeks. He enters week seven as the third most targeted tight end in the league at 51. He's drawn 10 or more targets in four of six games this season. He's had six or more receptions and five straight outings, and he's posted outage outputs of 75, 45, 47, 48, and 70 yards. That last figure coming on seven catches versus Seattle last Sunday. He's gone over a yardage prop in five straight outings, and books have kind of upped his total from 40 and a half to 45 and a half to 50 and a half the past three games. His total for Thursday night football down to 47 and a half, a number that I don't think reflects the probable shift in targets for the short week contest. And the Saints have been stingy against the position here in 2022, allowing just 29.5 yards per game to tight ends. But they haven't faced a tight end as active as Ertz outside of like Falcons overrated tight, uh, tight end Kyle Pitts. A couple extra catches here for Ertz. I think he easily eclipses this uh, total, which just sits below his season average in terms of yardage. So Zach Ertz. Over 47 and a half receiving yards. There's the horn. That's it for the latest Sharp 600 podcast. Thank you, Dell. Thank you for listening. A reminder, please rate and review the podcast. Let us know what you want to talk about. Let us know what you want to hear. Do you want more NBA? We can do that. We will talk to you on Friday. Good luck with Thursday Night Football.